Hey, welcome back. We are out here at Gresham High School uh, with Reese, and uh, today's a little windy, a little bit cold, but it's not raining, so hopefully the things go well today. But as soon as you pull back, yeah, I'll that foot. What I want to do is I want to work a little bit on your hip trying to get you to throw from your hip a little bit more. You're pretty powerful. You just need to kind of start the motion in a different place. So let's work on your hip a little bit. We'll go from um, your right side, work the left side, and we'll go back and forth to kind of bounce things out, all right? Um, so all we do is we just find a spot that we, I mean, it could be a wall at home, doesn't really matter, okay? So the idea is we want to start isolating um, the right hip a little bit, okay? So we get our feet set, okay? And we're going to just start turning the hip and try and feel from here, the lower half of that hip, just start to stretch a little bit here. The jab is here just to give you a little bit of restriction on the upper body, okay? I'll show you a few different um, hip mobility things, but again, I just want you to isolate from here and move here. And I want you to feel that spot, and then gradually you'll transfer that up to your shoulder. Okay, so it starts from the foot, the knee, and then the hip, and just keep your shoulders back so you can kind of feel like there's a little stretch down on that core. All right, swivel that right heel so the heel starts facing that way. So swivel the heel back. There you go. Okay, so the knee is forward, and then goes the hip. Where do you feel it? Okay, I want you to feel it kind of in the front. Okay, try and isolate it so you feel it there. I, I think lift it up a little bit, keep it up here, and then get your weight on that back foot. You don't want to be over the front foot yet, right? Everything's got to be on that back foot, and that's what moves. Okay, don't pull the shoulders, though. Make sure it's just the hip. Okay, so flare that right heel first, and now goes the hip. And where do you feel it now? Good, that's what we're looking for. All right, now you've established how to, you know, how to move the hip. Now, instead of striking the shoulders here, right, I just want you to keep the shoulders back. So it's all, it's all just the right hip. It's right hip every single time. It's here and here, it's not here, right? So you want to move you away from that habit of opening the shoulders. So isolate the hip as far as it can go, and then that's that's where you stop. That's it. Perfect. Nope, no shoulders. Just the hip. Okay, so flare that foot. And then hip goes as far as it can go, and then you stop. That's it. Good. 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 Okay, one more. Okay, now switch over left side. Yeah, ooh. Left is not as fun. As you're doing it, isolate that hip. Look for the same spot as you did as you did on the other side. So flare, flare that foot, turn that knee, feel the hip. This next one is, it's all about that hip, but we're going to do it slightly different, okay? Uh, all you're going to do is you're just going to grab hold of, you know, one of these, uh, one of these uh, bleacher, bleachers that you kind of feel like, you know, it's comfortable. Um, and all I want you to do is I just want you to go from here and turn, here and turn. So it's a very repetitive movement. That one was very slow and methodical. 
I want this one to be a little bit more popping through, okay? So you're just going to rock back and turn the hip, okay? You're trying to separate the shoulders from what the hip is doing, okay? So just hang on to it. You're going to go on that back foot, okay? Every single time, all right? Good. Keep going with it. As you do it, I want you to feel the pressure of that block. So hold that block and move that hip up and through that block. The left side. Now, doing it with this speed, it doesn't bother you nearly as much, right? Yeah, it feels easier. Yeah, hold that block. Make sure that you're pushing up against it. And flatten out your right foot. Good. Five more. Good. The reality is you can do these hip things if they're like this, where they're just quick hit through. You can do a lot of them and it's not going to bother you a whole lot, okay? When you start isolating and everything's super slow and you're getting a stretch, it's going to take a lot more effort. That's why yoga is so hard, yeah. right? So I want you to add this mobility, this hip mobility stuff to, to your exercises as well. I think if you can add the hip stuff and start creating a habit of, of, of hip mobility, being able to move that independent of the shoulders, then as you start throwing more often, you're going to be able to throw from your hip. And the arms, you know, that you were telling me earlier, like, Sometimes I, in the back of my head, I feel like I, I have to throw harder with my arm, right. right? This will teach you to get your hips to move through so that the arm, it just follows. It doesn't have to add, you know, a whole lot. Um, once you start getting the hip separating from the shoulder, you start getting stronger. Those, those rubber bands will get even better. So anyway, so I want you to start being able to throw from your hip a little bit more often instead of, instead of trying to get the arm. Yeah, I think as you do your simulated stuff, you start getting your hips involved in it. The yeah. simulated ones become a lot easier. Um, I used to do tons of simulated throws, and um, I just throw my hip every single time. It was just upper body. You would just follow. I mean, hips to shoulders, hips to shoulders. And every single time, it was like the shoulder didn't really take much of a beating, right? I started feeling it in my core a lot more, right? Okay, so good posture, knees up. Okay, same thing on the right side. I want you to take several strides in order to start getting it back. Because if you just start throwing it back there, it's gonna kind of screw up your posture. So maintain your posture as you're running and then gradually start moving it back. <laughs> Ray, slow it down a little bit? Yeah. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to do the same thing, but instead I want you to open your palm. Okay, I want you to balance the javelin on the palm of your hand. So long hand, get your fingers just a little bit cupped so that it can fit right here. And I want it very, very smooth the entire time. Okay, so you may have to take some speed away, but I want you to really try and maintain it. Okay. Same setup. Yeah, same setup. Take your time, gradually getting that javelin back, maintaining balance. We just want to smooth this process out. Run with it. If you spread your fingers out, the javelin's going to go all over the place. Okay? So keep your fingers in here. Find that balance point. Sometimes you have to move it in front of the cord a little bit. Okay? And it, as you go, I mean, it's really, it's slow, right? Right? It's got to be under control every time. Because what this teaches you is how to run and not have the javelin go everywhere, right? All right, so one more round down and back. 
Let's keep it right-handed down and back. Good. Lift it. Good. Lift it. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. <laughs> All right. Nice job. <laughs> it's tough, isn't it? It is a little tough. All right. So homework. I want you to keep working on your simulated stuff, right? Every single time, stay behind your block. Okay. Get that right side to unwind and come up onto that block. Don't pull your shoulder back. I want you to come up on top of it. All right. Uh, over winter break, it's got to be every other day at least for maybe 25 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that. Um, after you're you're doing your um, your simulated stuff and you feel pretty good about it, why don't you start adding some of that hip mobility? All right. Don't spend too much time isolating it and doing it slow. Uh, do it more rhythmically, right? So keep the shoulders back and it's just from here to here. Try and isolate that hip, but don't do it so slow that it's fatiguing, right? That should be just rhythmic. Now, as I do it, I kind of try and shrug my shoulders a little bit back so I can then make sure that the hip is going and the shoulders aren't following. I don't want to follow the shoulders yet. I want you to get used to the hip mobility and then the shoulders are going to naturally strike and follow. But simulated stuff, probably every other day at least for 25, 30 minutes. And then I want you to work through the hip mobility. If you feel like, hey, you got this thing nailed down, combine them. Get that hip mobility and that strike and start accelerating the arm. Uh, and then you said you have a jab, so you go out there and throw maybe one time. If you can get more volume but do light throws, maybe a 40% effort then you'll start to feel like what's appropriate for volume. Okay, I think I'll leave it at that. All right. All right nice job. You did awesome.